Summer 2022 was filled with a number of highs, like high temperatures, high drought indexes, high grocery costs, and high transportation costs. High electricity costs can also be added to the list, sometimes even after consumers took efforts to conserve energy. Naturally, many people want to know the cause behind increasing electricity costs for summer usage. The Summer Spike in Energy Cost Adjustment, or ECA, was directly related to the cost of natural gas, a key driver for the cost of energy purchased from the Southwest Power Pool's integrated marketplace. Corey Linville, Sunflower's Vice President of Power Supply and Delivery, is here to explain the answers to some of the questions electric consumers have had. How does Sunflower's market participation translate into its monthly ECA? I mentioned previously that as a participant in the SBP Integrated Marketplace, Sunflower is required to purchase all the energy required to serve its load from the market and is required to sell all of its generation into the market. The net result of the interactions associated with that purchase of energy and that sell of energy into the market is how the ECA is determined. Let's start with a simple example. Let's assume that the only generation that Sunflower has is Holcomb. And let's assume that Sunflower's load in a given interval is 600 megawatt hours. Let's also assume the same market pricing that we saw in the example with a 25% wind availability and a $9 natural gas price. So Sunflower's cost of energy to serve the load is going to be that 600 megawatt hour total times the $94 per megawatt hour market price of energy for that interval, resulting in a cost of $56,400. We also mentioned that Sunflower has to sell all of the generation that it generates into the market. So how does that work? If we look at this chart, this shows the same stack, the same wind and gas assumptions, and I've also highlighted where, where Holcomb is on that stack. You can see that Holcomb has a production cost of $19.71 per megawatt hour. Let's round that up to $20. So when Holcomb sells into the $94 per megawatt hour market, they're going to earn that $94 per megawatt hour revenue associated with whatever energy is generated. That's going to be offset by the $20 production cost. So the net impact is going to be a $74 per megawatt hour margin on every megawatt hour produced by Holcomb. So going back to our simple calculation, if Holcomb is producing 350 megawatt hours during the interval we're looking at and earning a margin of $74 per megawatt hour, the result is a credit of $25,900 that gets applied to the calculation for the cost to serve load. So if we combine those two totals, the $56,400 cost for the energy required to serve the load, the $25,900 credit associated with Holcomb's sell into the market, the net cost to serve load is $30,500, and if I divide that total by the 600 megawatt hour load during the interval, the total cost to serve load is $50.83 per megawatt hour. So this simple example illustrates the hedge value of having a lower production cost asset can provide. So while we started with a market cost of $94, Holcomb's interaction with the market brought that overall cost to serve our load down to $50.83. This waterfall chart represents an actual calculation of ECA from the month of August. At the top, we start with the market cost of load. Again, that's the cost of energy that we incur to buy the energy required to serve our load. You can see that's a relatively high value of about $78 per megawatt hour. A couple things contributed to that high market energy price in August. Average gas prices in August, if we, as we've talked about, were significantly higher than normal. They averaged about $8.50 per MMBTU. And the average wind capacity during the month was also relatively low at about 30%. The next part of the <coughs> waterfall chart shows the 
net margins that we earned to help offset that high cost of market energy. So if we look at Holcomb, the net margin from the energy that we sold into that high price mar market resulted in a reduction in our ECA of about $26.62 per megawatt hour. We also earned positive margins on Rubart, S4, S5, and Clifton. We also earned positive margins from our renewable resources, uh, totaling about almost $2. So if we start with that $77.92 per megawatt hour market cost to serve the load, the margins that we earned from selling our generation into the market brought our ECA down to $46. The next series of values represent other variable costs that are associated with our market participation. I won't get into a lot of the details on these, but I will point to the energy hedge product line item. You'll see that that line item added $8 to our overall ECA for the month. That energy hedge purchase was associated with a fixed price market energy block that we bought to try to protect ourselves from extreme price, spike, extreme price spikes that we may have seen during the month. You can think of it as an insurance policy. So for a portion of our energy supply, we went out and bought a block of energy at a fixed price. That fixed price was sold by a counterparty that built in some margin to protect themselves similar to how an insurance carrier may charge a premium, but the end result was we were protected from any price spikes that may have exceeded the price that we bought that energy for. This purchase was really intended to protect ourselves from very extreme price spikes, similar to what we saw during Winter Storm Uri. If you recall, during February of 2021, when that winter storm occurred, the price of natural gas shot up over $300 per MBTU and we saw market energy prices over $4,000 per megawatt hour. So this energy hedge product purchase was intended to protect ourselves against those extreme price spikes. And while it resulted in a premium for the month, again, you can think of that as an insurance premium against those types of excursions. Bottom line for the month of August, the Sunflower ECA was $49.95. While significantly higher than budget and not what we like to see, you'll notice that the market cost of load was substantially higher than that value. So the hedge that we were able to apply to that $78 market price of energy uh, resulted in about a $28 reduction in the end result ECA that we charged to our members.